We are now live. Hello. Uh, welcome. Um, welcome to Books, Bards, and Ballads. Uh, here we are, Friday evening on December. Can you believe we're in December already? It's, I don't know where this year went. <laughs> it's just, um, uh, welcome to this uh, Coracle presentation of the Sisterhood of Avalon, uh, Books, Bards, and Ballads. My name is Sydney, and um, I am delighted to be here this evening with Robin Cole. Uh, Robin is a indie author, urban fantasy, uh, and a tarot creator. So welcome, Robin. I'm Hello. really delighted to be visiting with you and chatting with you this Friday night. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, uh, and I see some folks are joining us. Welcome. It's wonderful to have you here. And Anita says hello. Hi, Anita. Hi, Anita. Hope you're doing well. Hope everybody's staying warm and safe. Um, well, I'm quite excited to be uh, chatting with uh, with Robin. I've been getting to know your work a little bit, uh, as I uh, let you know. I um, I dug into your first novel over the past few days, and I've got quite caught up in the story. And I'm excited to find out what happens to your hero heroine, uh, Catelyn, and uh, if she starts to get a little thing with her fighting instructors. So, um, but uh, anyway, let me uh, first ask you, Robin, um, just tell us if you tell us a bit about yourself. Okay. Um, no, hi, I'm Robin. Uh, as as Sydney said, I'm an indie author. Uh, I primarily write urban fantasy. So that's fantasy that's set in a real world setting. Um, this particular yeah. series takes place in New Jersey as I am a New Jersey native and felt mm -hmm. we needed to be represented in the fantasy world. Right. Uh, I also write tarot related material. I have uh, two tarot decks out right now and a Lenormand deck. Um, one of the books that goes with one of my decks is a shadow work workbook, specifically using tarot to facilitate shadow work. Mm -hmm. And um, I also have plans to write uh, like the more sword and sorcery fantasy, but that series has been put on the back burner until I catch up and finish my urban fantasy series. Oh, a whole other different series. Yes, you know. I have been writing since pretty much I could hold a pen. Oh, uh, really? My friend Valerie, who most of you know, if you've seen us together at Ninefold, we always come to things together. We both, um, we used to write fantasy stories back and forth together when we were in, you know, middle school. So I've been writing ever since I have a whole cast of characters in a whole nother world fleshed out in my head just hasn't really made it to paper yet in a form that I would share with everyone I still right. feels kind of you know a little silly and juvenile but <laughs> one day one day I'll make that a reality for everyone too oh awesome and uh Robin you mentioned the, the ninefold which is an event yes by the sisterhood of Avalon. Yes, ninefold festival and, that's how I found the sisterhood oh uh, I you. think it was the second one in the one in Ithaca that I first attended and that introduced okay. me to everybody. And I've been, you know, coming to you guys ever since. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. I, I love to hear that. And we're sure looking forward to when those can be in person. Yes. Right? Oh, we, I did attend this year's virtually and it was great. It was, oh, yeah. it was great to be able to see everybody virtually and to hear mm -hmm. the content, but I do very much just miss being in that sense yeah. of community with everyone for that weekend. It was always like my magical reset of the year and I miss it yes. so much. Oh yeah, that's a really good way to think of it. Absolutely, yeah. magical reset. I love that. So you've been writing ever since you could hold hold a pen. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Uh, I still have some of that old work from back in like the sixth grade. It's pretty cringy to look at now, but mm -hmm. it reminds me. I've always had a thing for reading and for fantasy. My parents are both big readers as I grew up, and my father was into fantasy when I was little. I was reading like uh, Dragonlance and Forgotten Realms books like in the fourth grade and all the other kids would make fun of me and say, are you reading the dictionary? Cause I was reading adult books and <laughs> I've just always loved fantasy and the worlds that people create. Oh, wow. So or, or then, so you've been writing a long time. Yeah. You've always been inspired by the, the books that you you've read and loved. It sounds like, but what would you say inspired you to actually sit down and, and craft the, the, the novels that you yeah, had? When I wrote the first book in my series, the warding, uh, the first book is called iron. I, I don't remember what 
triggered that in me. I've always had like, you know, the what ifs that get stuck in my head that make me mm -hmm. want to explore an idea. But with that specifically, I, it was very cathartic. I was very feeling lost myself. And the character of Caitlin very much came out of that where someone who feels like she should have her life together, but really just doesn't know what to do with herself and always feels like something's a little bit off. Right. And, and that was the what if that started. I was like, well, what if something is off? What if she isn't the same as other people? And that's why she's always felt a little bit alienated and a little right. bit separate, like she can't connect. Right. And I was like, well, what would make her different? And I love fantasy, mm -hmm. but wanted it in this world. And somehow the thought of uh, like a fairy world and fairy powers and the whole idea of how the the mythology of changelings and is she human is she completely human or is she not human well, at all this is what i'm wondering now because yeah you know, I'm looking forward to finding out. <laughs> you'll find out eventually i promise i promise but it just <laughs> it was one of those ideas that just kept coming back to me until i sat down and finally put, started putting it out on paper and i just I had to follow and see where it went mm -hmm. and that the first book i wrote that one, it actually, it took me a while. It was probably a year or two of tinkering back and forth and taking things out and putting different things back mm -hmm. until I've, I, I hit on that, where I just felt like, nope, this is, this is who she is, this is her story, and I want to tell her story. And it just right. motivated me from there to keep figuring out what would she do next? And what would she do next? <laughs> oh, you're unraveling the mystery. Yeah, some, I always laugh. Uh, that's something uh, I've always felt like. I always tell my husband, it's like I'm playing history's mysteries when I write. Like, sometimes I sit down and I don't have the answer. And as I'm writing, oh. I go, oh, oh, my God, that was it. How did I not realize that sooner? And it just right. kind of builds itself. Oh, wow. That's neat. Um, well, for those of you who might be just joining us, uh, welcome to... Uh, the Coracle presentation of books, bards, and ballads. And I'm here chatting with Robin Cole. She's um, an indie urban fantasy author and tarot creator. And so we're just uh, learning all about her her writing process and, and about her works. And um, uh, so if you do have a question, if you join us, you know, we'll keep our eye on the chat. Feel free to to uh to say hello or or pop a question in the chat and um uh but what i'm wondering now uh robin is if could you tell like how many books have you written um uh i have two full novels and one short story set in the warding world and then uh, on the non-fiction side of things i have uh, emerging from darkness the shadow work book right. and i have also written a full guide book for my first deck the beautiful rebellion so okay so four full books, a short story, and a lot of half-baked ideas I would one day like to see out as books. <laughs> right, sort of burbling in the cauldron. Now. Exactly, as yeah. Okay. And for the warding, I have been working on book three. Like, I always tell people, okay. I'm. if you've been waiting for it, I am so, so sorry. It is so overdue. I really wanted to have it out a lot closer to book two. Right. But I just, I don't know, I didn't feel like it was heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I had to make the difficult decision to scrap a bunch of it and right. go back and feel like I get more in touch with where I wanted it to go. Yeah. And it's taken me a while, but I'm hoping to finish that very soon. Okay. Well, I'm sure we're, I'm not quite at the point yet since I'm in still, you know, into the first book, but fair, well, fair. Well, I'll know when I get through the second book to just if you get to the end of book two, feel free to bug me because I need oh, the, the pressure sometimes. <laughs> Where is it? Now, is it fair to ask you if you have a favorite or is that? Um... Um, I mean, I think book one is is my favorite solely because it was the first it, it was the first work I completed to the point where I felt ready to share it with the world. So it's always going to be special to me. It was sure. the first thing I put out. The yeah. first thing that people got to know my name for, which is still weird to this day when, you know, to be a, a yeah such a fan of authors all my life and then to right. have people recognize my work is kind of a little right. ooh. <laughs> a little kind of a, a special thrill yeah yeah so i don't know that could change it would, if i put out more works my answer might change but for right now iron is still still my baby still my favorite <laughs> well thinking then about the characters in your yes. books do you have a favorite character it's got to be Caitlin. I mean, well, we, spend all, um, we spend all the books in her head, basically. Yeah. yeah, and and Cat is just near and dear to my heart. Like I said, she is she is a bit of catharsis for me. There's sure. a lot of my attitude in my 30s in her, right. Right. <laughs> and 
you know, a lot of differences too, but there, there's just something about her that just has always resonated with me. And I hope that what I put into her resonates with other people as well. Yeah. I mean, I love, she's like this, you know, smart ass straight, straight shooter, <laughs> but I lo I've loved the moments when she's kind of realized, Oh, wait a minute. I've been kind of an asshole. Yeah. Like, she, and she does have a bit of a chip on her shoulder, yeah. but she recognizes that. And yeah. she, she lets her mouth get, the better of her a lot and that's something i can relate to so <laughs> for sure that that's really fair well okay i'm just checking out the the question because we you know you and i have some questions yes. we wanted to talk about and i think this next one is quite interesting like if you could meet your characters what would you say to them oh that is that is difficult i mean i don't know i, I don't know honestly what i'd say to them it it, it would be so surreal to to sit down with them right. i mean i would just love to interact with them on a personal level i would i would love to hear how they feel that their right. story is going it's you know right. from the from my perspective i know the ins and outs and you know i'm, I'm pulling the strings behind the scene mm -hmm. but it would be really awesome to sit down and cat and say well, what do you what do you feel about this you know how, how do you think things are going and i would love right. to just see what kind of a reaction that could get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something that you aren't sort of pulling the string. Exactly, out. yeah, um, exactly. What that sometimes, like? it, would be, it would be cool to see like, well, like I said, sometimes when I'm writing, things just come out and I go, oh, how did I not realize that sooner? So I would love to get a response that makes me go, oh, I never thought about that, even though I, even though I wrote that. <laughs> well, so here's a bit of a question for you that, yeah. um, so would you want her to come into kind of your world, our day-to-day -day world, or would you want to go and hang out in her version of that? Oh, that, I would love to hang out in her version. I would, yeah. I would love to yeah. see the magic for myself. You know, it's yeah. always been, I've always been that nerd. <laughs> so yeah. to actually be able to experience a world where things like that happen that would just be mm -hmm. awesome i would love even if i don't think i'd want to be in her situation and you know have a troll with fairies yeah exactly <laughs> that might be a little too much but just to be in a world where someone can confirm that kind of thing is real right. would be great <laughs> i loved it when the sort of the office icky yeah gross guy <laughs> turned out to be this horned goat yeah. dude <laughs> the satyr i was like oh yeah, that could work. That kind of makes sense. Kind We've of makes all worked sense. with somebody like that before where you just kind of wonder. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you know, I've been really enjoying your fiction. Thank you. Um, and I'm also, I haven't had a chance to read yet, but I'm really intrigued by your decks and your workbook. Yes. Yes. Would you tell us a little bit about? Yes, tarot is another thing that's been a big thread all throughout my life. I've been reading since I was younger and I always wanted a deck that featured artwork that spoke to me on a deep level. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. first deck, The Beautiful Rebellion, is a pre-Raphaelite art deck that actually just started as a project. I was just doing it for myself and for right. my friend. And I had just created two copies for us. And I, at first I was just trying to do uh, Waterhouse because he's always been an artist that has deeply, deeply resonated with me. And it just, it wasn't, there wasn't enough art that fit what I felt about the cards. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I expand it, will I be able to find things? And the more and more I researched, the more paintings and painters I discovered from that time period, I just kept finding so many images that I would look at it and say, well, that that's a perfect Ace of Pentacles, or oh, that 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 would be a great Four of Swords. And right. I put together the decks again, just for personal use. Mm -hmm. And there's a local metaphysical shop that I would hang out at sometimes, and I happened to bring it with me. And mm -hmm. the readers who were there and the store owner were like, what, where, where did you get this? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I just, I had it made for myself. I'm just fooling around. They're like, no, no, I, I want a copy. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. Other people might be interested in this. <laughs> Maybe. Sure, sure. Right. And th things just aligned that at that time I had a little bit of capital to invest in just a small run. Mm -hmm. And within the first six months, it was sold out. Mm. So I did another run and that sold through and this newest edition, the third edition of it is now available directly from the printer and it's unlimited. So anyone who wants that can get their hands on it. And I'm very proud of how many people have really connected with that artwork and who, who can help, who can also see the tarot meanings in that artwork the mm -hmm. way that I could. 
Mm-hmm. And the uh, as soon as that deck was was fleshed out and working and doing its thing, I've always wanted to do something related to shadow work. Okay. Like the shadow work with tarot is something I discovered many years ago and I've always felt it just it hits a level with me that just I wasn't able to find through any other sort of therapy or whatever. It just it helped me put words to things I was feeling and experiences I might have been pushing back yeah. in ways that I couldn't otherwise. Right. So that deck I chose to do in a more modern art style where everything is very modern day images because that that's what we're experiencing here and now. And I felt with shadow work that that had that connection. Like one of the cards um, a lot of people had a really deep re- reaction to was my wheel of fortune is a Ferris wheel where it's, mm-hmm. it can be fun, mm-hmm. but I'm terrified of, I'm terrified of heights. So to me, me Ferris too. wheels are, are horrible. Like some people are, love that ride to me. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to be on the top of that, but in the wheel of fortune, you also don't want to be on the bottom of the wheel. So it, it just had that imagery that really connected for me. And I went with a similar vein through that deck. And that also spawns the book that goes along with it. Right. Um, that explains what shadow work is, mm-hmm. wh- what the process of using the cards to do shadow work entails. Mm-hmm. I created a series of spreads that build upon one another. So you can identify where your shadow issues are stemming from. Mm-hmm. And then work through it in different layers to help uncover where it came from and work with it in the present day and then eventually move on to the the process of integration where you accept the pieces of that shadow within yourself so you can move forward and in a healthier mind state. So that book um, is currently available just in PDF form Mm -hmm. in my Etsy shop as a printable, but I Mm -hmm. do have plans to bring back the printed paperback version in the beginning of next year. So I'm hoping that will be available in like Amazon, Barnes and Noble space hopefully by the end of January. I, um, I, I'm i glad to hear that. I, I was poking around your, your Etsy shop and yes. I got very excited about um, uh, about your workbook and um, I haven't got it yet. So I yeah. might just, you know, wait for that. But I did notice and I really appreciated um, that you uh, have dis- uh, sort of crafted the workbook so that it would work with any tarot deck. Yes, yeah, shadow work can be done with any deck. I was doing yeah. shadow work long before I ever had the idea of creating my own decks. Mm-hmm. And there's a certain decks I find um, that I have in my ridiculously large collection that work perfectly for shadow work. So anything right. that you feel connects with you on that mm-hmm. that deep soul level can be used for shadow work. Mm-hmm. So when I made the workbook version, I it's not graphics intensive. So there's no card art with it so that people don't right. feel they need a specific deck to do the shadow work. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, of course, if you want my my shadow work deck, I'm more than happy to talk about it, and I would also <laughs> say go go get it. But you, you have do it with anything. Um, you don't are you need able to anything. show us any? Do you happen to have? Sure. Them? Yes. Uh, let's I let's pull out some. Plan it, so. So. Right. And there's some uh, some lovely conversation going on about uh, uh, Jenna saying that uh, yours is the best pre-Raphaelite deck. Oh, there. thank you so much. <laughs> yes. I have to admit, I haven't bought many other pre-Raphaelite decks because I'm, I'm well, it's my own. <laughs> <laughs> so for um, Emerging from Darkness, like I said, it's yeah. a primarily black and white deck that oh, okay. has some pops of color, but oh, yes. I wanted it to be that shadowy, sort of energy where you yes. can basically like, it, oh, I'm trying to find the camera on my thing. Yeah, I think that's so pretty good. I, I, I went with images that I felt oh, just yes. tapped Powerful. into like those deep, deep shadows that we all have. Right. And in this, the process of shadow work that I talk about, um, you use the ma- major arcana specifically for identifying your shadows. Okay. Because I felt like those cards are the heavy hitters. They're the yeah. ones that usually represent our bigger issues. So they're the cards that you would you, you would find the most connection with in regards to the individual shadows. And then once you've identified that shadow, you would then use like the major arcanas to work through it. So they're a little, little more playful, like my my four points, my piggy. (laughs) So 
Rob, and may I ask, like, obviously for your your Pre-Raphaelite deck, you use the, the paintings that are out yes. there. And, yes. And so where did you garner these images from? These, um, I, it's, I did digitally do the artwork. Uh, they were okay. basically stock photos that I then ran through different artistic processes to gotcha. turn from a photograph into yeah. a sketch and then it, add the different, like, pops of color in where I oh, felt yeah. like it highlighted things. Oh, so okay. It's, wow. it's, it's. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's I like to do works. similar work. So it, it's, yeah. yeah it's I've had some fun. people say that the, the fact that it is so modern, to, yeah. it doesn't work for them, which I get. I mean, everybody has their own preferences, which is why I always say, if you don't like the deck, that's fine. Don't buy the deck. Right. But right. I still think everyone can benefit from the shadow work with a deck that they do connect with instead. Right. Right, absolutely. I see uh, Jenna has posted a link to your uh, Etsy page there. Oh, thank so, you, Jenna. Uh, so people can find your your decks there. And well, the my decks, I'm, I'm not selling from myself anymore. They are direct right. from the printer. Gotcha. So um, you can find the links to the individual decks on my website, robinelcole.com. Right. And that has also the links to where my books are sold and right. to the decks and to my Etsy shop if you wanted to get the workbook or a tower reading or something like that. Oh, you do um, live readings? Yes, I do. Like, oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. Awesome. Um, I also it's, oh, yeah. have a monthly tarot subscription service where it's a tarot reading and goodies to go along with a, a monthly theme. And I sell that in my Etsy shop as well. Um, are, wh what kind of goodies? I mean, uh, I, uh, most of it's handmade. Uh, there's always a candle, an oil, and an herbal blend to go with the theme of the month. And then a little something extra, like this pa oh, I wish I had an extra. For December, I had made gilded pine cone ornaments for people for the box. Okay. The month before that, we did um, a lip balm, a winter care lip balm. So it's always, I, I like making things, and I like experimenting with things. So there's always something a little extra that goes along with every month. <laughs> Oh, wow. That sounds intriguing. That would Thank be, you. I'm sure, just delightful to arrive at your house, right? And yeah, I, 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 I've had a couple people that have been with me since I started this a couple of years ago, and they said that it's just a little treat you look forward to every month. I try to make it like a little self-care magical ritual in a box kind of a thing. Right, right. Um, well, uh, how about we talk about your writing process okay. a little bit? Um, how, how would you, what is your writing space like? Uh, Where do you tend to do your writing? I have my Keurig right next to my desk. <laughs> I drink you have a lot your, of I'm sorry, you're rich. <laughs> you have but, your um, rich. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. You have what next to your desk? My Keurig, my coffee maker. Oh, gotcha. There's a lot of caffeine that goes into my writing process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, For the longest time, I was working a full-time day job, so I would get up an hour or two earlier every morning to get writing in before I went to work because mm -hmm. by the time I came home at night, my brain was useless. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that was how I wrote the first two books. Now mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm full time on my own here, I've gone back to writing at night as a night owl. So usually after my husband goes to bed, I make that last cup of coffee and I sit down at my computer right. and just see what happens. <laughs> right. But my writing space, um, it's actually not all that interesting. I like to keep my, my desk very clean. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just my laptop, the printer, and a couple uh, odds and ends that have you know, uh, I have a picture of me and my husband, things like sure. that. But it's it's very, I like a nice, clean, uncluttered space. Otherwise, I am very prone to distractions. Right. <laughs> and I learned that early that I can't have little toys or things that I could be playing with on my desk because then I'll do that instead of focusing on the hard things. <laughs> clean, uncluttered, distraction-free. Yeah. Yeah. And you just... Yeah. That's why I do, I do prefer you. writing first thing or after everyone has gone to bed at night when there's no distractions... That's that's the way I get things done. Now, does writing energize you or exhaust you, or is there? I, a... I find it does energize me, which mm -hmm. is why I, I had to do it in the morning originally. Because some there have been nights where I, I'll get really into something, and mm -hmm. I look up and it's it's four thirty in the morning, and I'm like, oh, whoops! Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now that yeah, now that I can I always admire my own... you, night owls. <laughs> now that oh, I can okay. keep my own schedule, that's not so bad. So I right. do find it very energizing. If I feel like if if I'm getting exhausted, I know it's time to just turn it off and walk away because I, I'm trying to push something that's not ready to come yet. So mm -hmm. I, I always 
tell myself if, I, if I'm starting to feel that frustration or like it's like I'm really dragging out those words, I'm probably not putting out something I'm going to be happy with when I look back the next day. That makes sense. It makes sense. So is there anything that surprises you about the writing process or, you know, your experience of writing? Um, I'm surprised. I, I, I am surprised sometimes with how the ideas chain themselves. Like I said, there's been many times where I've sat down thinking, all right, I think this is what I want. And as I'm writing, things evolve and I have to then go, wait a minute, am I going to go totally off the rails here? If I follow this, should I pull it back? And I found I, I just need to trust myself. Mm. I, I do outline everything ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So I have a vague description of, you know, this chapter is when these events will happen. But if I try to go too in detail, I, I kind of lose the magic for myself. Right. So I've, I've had, but if I don't outline at all, then I'm just, I, I don't know where I'm going sometimes. So I've, I've had, I've been surprised to find that the happy medium for me is to give myself the space to play, mm -hmm. but also to, to be able to have a little bit of a guidepost down the way so that I know when I need to pull back and start wrapping up a certain right. scene or, you know, so I still keep things going at a pace that I can work with. <laughs> Makes sense. So that's again finding the the, the magic. Yeah, yeah. That fulcrum, that balance. Between. Yeah, I think especially with fantasy writing, if you if you try to make it too serious, I just feel like it dampens something. Like yeah. I need to have a that little bit of sense of mystery to keep myself coming back for more, as well as the readers. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Um, so what have you learned? I mean, I'm sure you've learned a lot of things. I'll, but, I'll, yeah. Um, I, yeah. I learned that it, it takes a lot of a lot of dedication, mm -hmm. a lot of time management skills that in the beginning I did not have. Uh, like I said, mm -hmm. that first book, I it took two, maybe even a little bit more to write. And that's when I put that book out, I told myself I wanted faster to come out within a year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I did not have much of a social life during that year and a half. Right. I right. really had to buckle down and tell myself, no, you're getting up at 5 a.m., and you're putting mm -hmm. out a certain amount of words before you mm -hmm. go to work. I needed to really put in the dedication to that. And it, it was hard. It's it's mm -hmm. some people just make it sound like, oh, one day I'm when I have time, I'm going to write a book. And it's it's not that simple. It's not just it's not just a matter of, you know, carving out an hour and then you think, OK, now next time when I have the energy, I'll do it again. You, you need to really regiment yourself if you're going to meet a goal like writing a book. So would you say that's what, because I guess I'm curious about what keep, keeps you motivated when it gets uh, tough. So it sounds like, you know, having that schedule. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Holding myself responsible. I always, when I'm actively writing, um, even when I was working on the tarot decks and their guidebooks, I would set myself a measurable goal every day. And even if it was only 250 words, which is about one typed page, Mm -hmm. I would not let myself stop before I hit that goal. And if most days, I by the time I got to that 250 words, I, the, the juices were flowing. And I would right. easily sit there longer and keep going and keep going. But just right. telling myself, okay, if you really don't have the energy or there's other things you have to do, just make it to that small measurable piece. Mm -hmm. And then you can stop if you have to. Right. And it got me into the habit of sitting down every day and doing a little bit and sometimes more, but if not, I was okay with that. You were still, you know, kind of chipping away. Exactly, exactly. I had a measurable goal that I knew I could reach, so I didn't just sit down and feel like, oh God, how am I ever gonna get this done? It's, you know, it took longer than I, I wanted with some things, but I got there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and the timing was interesting because Anita just asked if it was the same for your your decks, and I think you <laughs> yes. just said. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit different of a process because mm -hmm. I wasn't writing for the cards, but I did a lot of research and went through a lot of images and I would tell myself, okay, today we're going to do these two cards. Mm -hmm. And I would, for either, for either deck, since both are art based or mm -hmm. picture based, I would look through images and I would work, tinker with them, see if that fit with the mood of what I wanted for that card. Mm -hmm. And then also I'd have to go through and look, all right, where am I going to put the title on the card? Is the, the spacing and the words going to work out with the art? Is it going to block something that I feel is too integral in the painting that right. then I'm not, it doesn't look right visually. So mm -hmm. as long as I had a goal when I sat down, 
I would make sure I hit that goal at least. Right. And then if I wanted to do extra, that was fine. But I always made sure I got that piece done for that day before I moved on. Right. Wow. That's awesome. That's, um, I don't know, I feel invigorated. <laughs> Thank you. Like, like <laughs> both it's structured and I don't know, it's again that beautiful that, blend between. Yes, yeah. yes, that's the thing. I can't be too structured or then I right. there's that, that part of me, that, that Caitlin part of me that goes, <laughs> then I'm not doing any of it. <laughs> so I had to find a, a goal that was reachable, mm -hmm. but still allow myself that play time while achieving that goal so that I felt like I was connecting with what I was doing. Right, right. Um, oh, I see uh, Anita has asked, how long did it take to create a deck for you? Uh, the first deck, like I said, I didn't have a goal. I really didn't think I was ever going to do anything with it. I was just creating it for myself. So that started off, I think it took like a good six months for me to come up with a first prototype because I was just every once in a while when I had time, I would sit down and mess around with it. And then once other people started expressing interest and I realized that there was more that I needed to put into it, then I started having, you know, okay, I'm going to finalize this card by this time right. let me sit down and fi finish this and some since some of it had already been done that didn't take me as long um right. i was working on emerging from darkness from probably about the time i finished the beautiful rebellion so it took a good year for that deck to be fully fleshed out and for the shadow work process and the book to be written alongside it at the same time right. so i was tinkering with how I wanted to present the shadow work with alongside of building the cards themselves. So that took about a full year from start to finish. Great. Thank you. Well, um, is there any kind of words of wisdom or encouragement you would offer to those who are embarking on their own projects? Just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> there is so many different perspectives and so many different stories we all have inside us. Mm -hmm. I just, especially in this day and age when, the, the the gatekeeping aspect of fiction has kind of gone down a bit. You don't need for a big publisher to back you. If right. you want to just put out something small and see where it goes, you, you can do that quite easily these days. It takes a little right. more work on your part since you don't mm -hmm. have somebody doing the actual formatting and editing and all that right. uh, for you. But if if you want to just go for it, it's, it's so rewarding. Like mm -hmm. I said, it is so strange to me, even to this day, when somebody will go, oh that's yours <laughs> and i'm like oh uh yeah i remember when i was printing off um for what for one of the ninefolds i did a presentation for emerging from darkness before it, oh. the deck was finished and i was printing out sample decks right and the the girl at staples was like oh this is so cool she's I, i'm into tarot too and i was like oh that's awesome you know mm -hmm. and we got to talking and she's like and she said something, I'm like, oh yeah, this will be my second deck. And when I said the first was, and she asked what my first was, and I said the beautiful bell, and she goes, oh my God, I have that. Oh, wow. And it was like, yeah. I just, like, my husband was like, you looked like a deer in headlights. Like, you froze. <laughs> and I was like, I just didn't know how to respond. Like a stranger, mm -hmm. just, oh yeah, I have your deck. And it was right. the most awkward, but also rewarding feeling. And sure. every time someone tells me how much they connect with either my characters in the books or mm -hmm. with the decks I've created, it just, mm -hmm. it makes me so happy that I could give them that. Mm -hmm. So if there's something inside you that you really feel you, you want to share with the world, just do mm -hmm. it. Just see where it goes. It doesn't hurt to try. Oh, absolutely. Um, I feel myself taking that, that into heart and really appreciate um, that encouragement and that and your excitement and your passion is really, like I say, invigorating and uh, inspiring. Um, so, uh, Robin, I know Jenna has uh, put both the link to your Etsy shop and right uh, also the link to your uh, website. So, uh, is that are those the best ways to get a hold of you? And they are. Um, I'm not really too present on social media these days, just for time's sake. I'm trying yeah. to focus more on the creation, right. but I always do respond to contacts through either Etsy or my website. So they're mm -hmm. great. If you ever have a question for me, I, I'm more than happy to talk tarot or fiction at any time. Um, all of my products are kind of like spread out. My books are available in print on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. The ebooks are available, Kindle, Nook, Kobo, uh, iTunes, but everything is linked. 
on my website. So if you ever okay. d don't know where to find something, right. there's sections there for books and tarot and Etsy. With all my links, you'll always be able to find where things are currently being sold or where if you want to take a look at different cards or anything like that, they have the previews of everything. So right. everything through my website is usually the easiest way to find everything. Great, and that's robinlcole.com, yeah. and it's right there in our in our chat. Thanks to Jenna. Um, Robin, I really enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you. This <laughs> evening. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for coming and spending time with us and, and sharing of your creativity and your enthusiasm. It's thank just you. really lovely to just um, sort of bask in that for a little while. Thank and, you. And uh, I want to thank everybody who has taken the time to tune in and uh, and join us here for our Corkle Books, Bards, and Ballads. Uh, please keep your eye on uh, the Sisterhood of Avalon page for um, uh, information about upcoming events. And uh, if you haven't already, uh, join the Corkle group um, where you can be sure to get information about all of our all of our programming. And uh, Robin, I. I hope to maybe see you at an upcoming ninefold festival. Oh, I hope so. I can't wait until we can all see each other again. <laughs> yes, I think that would be lovely. And in the meantime, hopefully our paths will cross on these um, electronic waves. Yes. Well, thank you again very much. And again, thank I want you to for having me. You're very welcome. And I want to wish everybody uh, a lovely evening and. Um, and, uh, and a wonderful weekend. So take care, everybody, and we will see you all again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.